half a mile of concrete has been poured for this section of the Yerba Buena Island transition structure, which connects the new Bay Bridge to Yerba Buena Island. The concrete is cured for a week, and already the next major phase is underway to make it even stronger. We've just completed pouring three massive concrete pours, totaling over a thousand cubic yards for the deck alone on the structure. And the next step that we're doing is installing steel to reinforce it. Concrete is great in compression, steel is great in tension. When you put them together, you've got something that's super strong. That's what we're doing now. The plan is to snake tendons of steel through the concrete. To make that possible, engineers had to plan ahead long before the concrete was poured. Even as the structure was being framed in wood, workers were laying corrugated ducts the entire length of the deck. You can see them here, nestled beneath the rebar, waiting to be covered with the strongest concrete man can devise. We've designed the deck so that it has grout tubes in it. These tubes will allow us to put steel tendons, on average about 26 tendons each, uh, inside the individual tubes, and then we'll tension them to add strength. There are almost 100 different spools of strands of wire that we had to place inside this bridge deck last week as we unrolled each individual strand, pulled them about a half a mile to the other side. On one end of the bridge, we had a winch that did the pulling. We took a tow line and put the, pulled it all the way through the inside of the bridge, connected it onto the strand, and then pulled the entire strand through. The amount of steel that's on the inside of this concrete structure is tremendous. There's, uh, there's over 17 million pounds of steel inside this bridge. Over 21,000 pounds of it is these post-tensioning strands. It takes about 10 days to snake those tendons through the bridge. But adding all the steel is just part of the process. They don't want it slack deep inside the bridge. They want it taut, pulled as tight as possible, meeting strict engineering specifications for each tendon. That's post-tensioning. On both ends of the bridge, jacks are being used to stretch the tendons. And they measure the amount of pressure that's on them, um, and then once they've reached the spec, they stop, they cut the, cut the strands off, and they cap them. As the cables are tensed, you can see the ends start to stand erect. And while that is happening, tendon by tendon, the bridge itself begins to lift exactly as planned. The whole point of the, uh, the post tensioning is to, is to add extra strength to the bridge. It adds a little bit of camber to the bridge and the bridge starts to lift as the uh, steel is tensioned. And you can see now we've got about two inches of lift uh, coming up off on the structure. Uh, we'll get up to as high as four inches. The jack is removed. The tendon ends are cut. Both ends are capped and secured. Then a final step. Each tube has to be filled with grout. Hundreds of bags of grout will be used. And even that took lots of advanced planning. What they're clearing out here is a, is a grout vent. After the steel tendons are placed and tensioned inside the, inside the bridge deck, the entire tube that the tendon is in is filled with grout or concrete so that it's completely protected from any type of corrosion that would happen. But these are very important, these grout vents, because as they're pumping the grout through, you have to allow the air the ability to escape. The tendons are moving up and down through the bridge. And so as you push grout through the tendon, you need the air to be able to come out through the vent so the grout can continue on. The same process was done on the Skyway portion of the bridge. Corrosion was discovered on some of those tendons. Coming up, we'll show you how that problem was discovered by Caltrans and what they did to fix it. On the New Bay Bridge, Mark Jones reporting.